Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live, Mike Sembervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Very happy to be joined today by our main man, Rocky Romero, New Japan Strong, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Actually, I could What's... rattle off like 15 promotions at this point. Talk Super and coach. Talk and shop, Super a coach. mania. You were on uh, AEW. True, true. Yeah. I haven't seen an impact in a while. Not, no, not impact, but you never know. You know, I feel like we still got some time left in the year and I heard they're coming to Las Vegas. You know, I'm in LA, so you never know. Keep your eyes out. Heard it here first. Okay. So this coming Saturday, we have got the New Japan show, which at the, uh, the resurgence show, the last I checked, there's four tickets left. Uh, I I presume those are going to go. I think we can safely say that this show has sold out. Sold out. Yep. Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. I don't believe you had to move the show due to a bomb threat like the last big show at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. (laughs) But um, I'm sure a much better card than uh, WrestleMania 7. Wait a second. That was was the K1 show. Don't remind Johnny Morton of that. Wasn't that at the Coliseum? <laughs> Actually, I think it was. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, yeah. we're right in front of the Coliseum, so we're right at the Parasails of the – I think it's called Parasails of the Coliseum. So it's really cool background. Uh, you know, when it gets to, like, dusk, it's going to be really awesome. It's basically like, you know, Roman Coliseum kind of thing behind you. I mean, it's it's going to look pretty cool. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm has super anyone, excited. Has anyone called to thank you for the house yet, or do those last four tickets have to sell before everybody starts <laughs> calling you and saying thank you, Mr. Romero? I've been getting all kinds of texts today, you know, from from uh, one of your dear friends, Tom Lawler. He's thanked me about 400 times, you know, for giving him the opportunity and, and giving him, you know, uh, you know, to be in front of a sold out house. Because obviously, once they announced my name, then tickets just started to fly. I thought he didn't like you. He doesn't like me. It's I true. see. But, so, but, he but he's thankful. He was, yes. He's thankful in the fact that I, you know, everybody knows I sold out the house, you know. Now, the obvious question here, Rocky, is, uh, I mean, we know the guy doesn't like you. We also know that he's a strong openweight champion. We know that you are a multi-time champion. Mm. I mean, when are we going to get this Rocky Romero-Filthy Tom match for the title? I'm down. Anytime. I mean, actually, uh, you know, me and Tom had a hell of a match back in MLW earlier this year, late last year. I can't remember what it was. but, uh, But, yeah, we threw down. So I wouldn't mind challenging for that title. I mean, it's a pretty title. Well, I, I don't want to uh, realize you're on the show and it sounds like I'm kissing your ass. But, I mean, if anyone's ever watched Rocky Romero, I mean, this is just a fact of the matter. It appears that you have a really good match with everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, uh, you know, my my inspiration was Eddie Guerrero, you know, for when, when I was kind of just starting in the business. And, you know, that was a guy who could literally have a match, a great match with just about anybody. So I, I kind of always wanted that you know, to be a goal of mine was that, you know, you could throw me in any type of situation and I'd have an awesome match, whether it be like UWF rules or if it was Lucha Libre or whatever, you know, like I'd go out there and, and, um, and be the dependable one on the card. Well, now, Rock, I, I want to just, sorry, just because Bobby Eaton passed away, Bobby Eaton was such a great tag team wrestler, so many partners, Coco, where, you know, obviously his members of Midnight Express, all that sort of stuff. You have been a great tag team wrestler as well, and you've had, you know, several different partners, and obviously that was talked about with you and the super coaches with Taguchi. How difficult is it to try to meld for you, or how has it been to try to, like, because you've been great with everybody, and obviously not just saying that because you're on the show, but you have been a rock for the teams that you've been on. How How is it trying to kind of like, you know, read and react with your teammates and try to move things forward with so many different partners? You know, it's it, it can be challenging, you know, because everybody has their own opinion on wrestling and how, you know, things should be, you know, or how things are done. Uh, and sometimes it's really challenging, but, you know, you got to – I think what's good about me is I'm, a, I'm good about um, – giving and taking in the relationship of of being in a tag team. So like, and that's super important for you to be successful either way. And I think that that's just kind of like uh, maybe the new Japan way in me kind of like when I learned, you know, being young, that you know, that you have to give and take. Right. So like that, that's really important. You can't just be, you know, the stubborn a-hole and like, and just say, this is how it's going to be. So, uh, you know, and you get, sometimes you got to let people, take chances and if they mess up and they're wrong then that's okay you know so like uh you know and then you know sometimes you have to tell them hey uh 
you were wrong in that situation. Let's try it my way next time. Okay, cool. You know, so like you just got to be cool about it. And um, I think that that's why I've kind of been successful in, with so many different types of people and temperaments, you know. You know, we've talked about this to a degree before, but uh, I mean, I nowadays with so many people working New Japan Strong, I know people that work there. I've asked questions, and I will hear the answer more often than not. Talk to Rocky. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's going on here? Like, what is your role the Godfather. here in New Japan Strong? <laughs> I mean, for a while it was kind of like, ah, eh, you know, sort of like a liaison, but it, right. it, it seems more and more like you're the guy. I mean, I, I still feel like I'm the, you know, liaison, you know, so to speak. I mean, I, you know, I, I've been with the company since 2002. You know, October 2002 is when I debuted for New Japan Pro Wrestling, and I've been involved with them pretty much ever since. So uh, I think that there's just, um, and I'm, I'm the local LA guy. I probably, I guess I might be like the longest, uh, I guess, career wise. I, I guess I'd be the, you know, I'd probably be in new Japan longer than any other foreigner in history. So, I mean, I think that there's just like, uh, you know, they just respect my opinion a bit. And, uh, you know, so like, you know, I, I, especially when it comes to talent, I've got, I feel like I've got a pretty good eye for talent. Uh, because, you know, like every every person that I, I, I suggest gets seems to get picked up by whether it's AEW or WWE or, you know, or, or ROH or something. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think that 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 just kind of goes on with the territory when you've been in the, in the business for so long and you've kind of seen uh, what's been successful and what hasn't. You know, we once uh, interviewed Ariel Helwani when he made it big and uh, he went from just some kid doing a college radio show that only his mother listened to and then a podcast. And next thing you know, he's like the, he's just, he's Errol Hawani. And I the said, go-to guy. how yeah. did you, how did you go from that to this? And you know what his answer was? I just kept showing up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. his answer. <laughs> Great. And I was answer. like, God, he's right actually. Cause he just kept showing up at these events. I just saw him everywhere. Next thing you know. So as the, as the guy who kept showing up, Rocky, I watched right. New Japan strong every Friday and still empty arena shows. But, of course, mm -hmm. you got the big show this coming weekend, and I presume that tapings are coming up. Uh, as I've talked with uh, with Tom about, like, I saw uh, Russ Tyler on the show to, like, May or something like that, and he's in NXT at the same time because you guys had taped so far in advance. Mm -hmm. What is the status? When will I be watching New Japan Strong and see crowds? Uh, probably just a few weeks from now. Excellent. Um, I, I, yeah, I think we're we're getting close. So yeah, we're taping again on Monday, which is completely sold out at Thunder Studios in Long Beach. So that's our first time there. Uh, shout out to Thunder Studios because it's a really awesome uh, studio. So I'm excited to be there. And um, I think we've got about like 150 fans uh, and really intimate setting. We just announced that uh, uh, Tomoro Ishii and Tanahashi will be there. So I mean, that's going to be pretty cool to see them in that setting. And um, yeah, I think we're probably like maybe three or four weeks away from seeing Strong with fans, like on World and Fight TV, something like that, maybe. No. I, I, I'm sorry, I got to ask, just when the Shii was announced, and obviously Tanahashi too, but like as soon as the Shii's name crept out there, how many calls did you get or, or like, you know, maybe like, hey, me and the Shii? Because, I mean, come on, I mean, he's, a, he's everybody's <laughs> yeah. dream match right now. In this I country. called him, right. believe it or not. Right. Yeah, <laughs> Alvarez no, will come out of retirement? Lot, there was, no, there was a lot of wrestlers that reached out. Was like, whoa, how do man? If you if you would have told me issue, you would have been on the show. I would have wanted to be on it. Or, or actually, I saw a lot of fans just tweeting at like uh, at, at me or at uh, or at, at the New Japan um, Twitter that uh, how how much they wish they would have known earlier because then that would have been the deciding factor if they would have gone live or not. So I mean, I think it's kind of cool that that uh, you know issue's got so much presence in the United States. Tom, by the way, Filthy Tom is here in our uh, Twitch chat right now, talking some trash. I'm like, oh, yeah? I'm like three and zero against that guy. He says, "Is he? He might be actually." Wow. <laughs> you know what? Nobody remembers if you won or lost, Tom. You got to remember. That's yeah, true. Wins and losses true. don't yeah. matter, Tom. Wins especially in New Japan. Matter. It's about how you show up, and if you show up every time, like Ariel Hawani, yeah. you put on a, a, a good a performance. Then that's what the people want to see. Yes. Now, the other question, it'd probably be better to ask uh, some of the other folks that are coming on uh, later on this week, but 
I mean, a lot of the the foreign talent is uh, several of them are now in America and New Japan Strong and Impact Wrestling. And obviously there's a lot going on in Japan with COVID. And you were just actually there recently. What can you tell us about the situation in Japan? Uh, when do you expect to see some of the foreigners back in Japan? What can you tell us, if anything? Uh, yeah, I mean, things are, are definitely difficult uh, in Japan. I expect that things are going to probably start to get better in the next um, maybe like three to four months. Uh, hopefully we'll be starting to see uh, some new faces, hopefully. And um, obviously cases are still going up, but now that the vaccine has started to hit, you know, hit the city, like the major cities, Tokyo and Osaka, I, I expect to see like um, some regulations probably getting lifted, hopefully. So uh, I'm hopeful for it, at least by Russell Kingdom, if, if it, the latest. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd love to go back anytime. I mean, I, I like going back. The hard part is just doing the two-week quarantine, especially now that we have uh, all these shows coming up. Next month, we're in Dallas. Uh, in October, we are in uh, Philadelphia. So it's kind of tough. But I think it's also kind of cool. I mean, it's also given us this opportunity to create strong, right? Like this whole pandemic gave us opportunity to create strong, create a completely separate roster from the main roster. And now we can kind of highlight uh, some of this great talent that, you know, we, we've kind of got available to us, like Jay White, Finley, Juice, uh, just to name a few. And, um, yeah, maybe they're, they won't be in the G1 because they were already announced for the New Japan Strong tapings in Dallas and Philly. But uh, I, I think it just shows that New Japan is really serious about moving forward in the U.S. and, and how important that is to the future of New Japan Pro Wrestling. So I'm excited for it. Now, I got to ask about this because as I look at the card for the show on Saturday, I mean, one name after another has appeared at some point or another on New Japan Strong. With one notable exception, one of my sleeper matches for the show is Shii versus Moose. How did this get yeah. set up? Um, I, I, you know, I, I heard that Ishii was, uh, was coming, and somebody asked me to reach out to somebody from Impact because they'd like to get a big name and reached out to Scott Demore, and Scott Demore said, Moose really wants to be a part of Strong and wants to be a part of New Japan U.S., so... I said that sounds like that would be cool. Let me let me ask the office, and the office said that would, they would love that, and there it is. I'm a I big mean, fan. I, it's kind of a it's kind of a dream match, you know, especially now. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this moose. Five years ago, yeah. he's great. He's Wait, also you... ten feet tall, however, and she is not no. ten feet tall. So this is going to be a very interesting match. Well, what, do you yeah. think, what do you think will be <laughs> yeah. more impressive, though? Well, what would be a tougher like? contest for she would it be against moose or against a real canadian moose <laughs> i mean it's kind of one and the same i feel like <laughs> like they're very similar <laughs> dude I'm, ex I'm i'm super pumped for this and i think that this one uh has an like like you said has the opportunity to probably steal the show you know completely and um it, like i just saw the amount of tweets that i saw once it was announced uh i think just goes to show how strong that match is on the card and how interesting it is, you know? So, um, I'm, I'm super pumped. I'm excited. I think the whole card from, from bottom to top is, is really stacked. You got Lance Archer. Well, actually US, hold that thought, uh, Rocky. We'll do a, uh, we'll yep. do a quick plug. when We come back back in a moment, everybody observer live. Joe Brian Alvarez here, wrestling observer live. Mike Semper, VV, Rocky Romero joining us here today. New Japan resurgence, August 14th, this Saturday, LA four tickets left. If you can get them. Otherwise, Rocky, tell us how we can see the show, what matches you're looking forward to. Let's get some plugs in. Yeah, the show is live on Fight TV with English commentary. Uh, so make sure you, if you want to watch it with English commentary, it's got to be on Fight TV uh, live. John Moxley and a mystery partner against the Good Brothers. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and then our, our double main event, Jay White, the never open weight champion, going against David fin Finley, the challenger. And then we also have Lance Archer, the U.S. heavyweight champion, defending against the one, the only, the ace, Hiroshi Tanahashi. So it's going to be, a, it's a stack card. We talked about Moose and Ishii. It's going to be a killer event. The only place to see it right now, because it's there's three tickets left, is on Fight TV or NJPW World with Japanese commentary. 
That's right. And of course, every Friday, New Japan Strong, NJPWWorld.com. Show's always 48 minutes to an hour, three matches, all sorts of great stuff. All these names we've talked about are there uh, regularly. Fred Rosser, Rocky, Wheeler Yuta, TJP, Good Brothers, Moxley, Jay White's been on the show. Actually, I had a great match with you, Rocky, uh, earlier right. this year. And uh, that's always available, and you can get archives as well, njpwworld.com. And uh, Rocky, let's get some social media plugs out for you. Yeah, you sh- if you also want to watch Strong, you can watch the older episodes free on YouTube on at the NJPW uh, YouTube channel. And at Azuka Rock, A-Z-U-C-A-R-R-O-C on Instagram and Twitter. Hit me up, say hello. And that's it, everybody. I want to thank Rocky as always. Callers and listeners, Mike as always, everybody in the studio. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live. We have one more. Oh, we do? Yeah. This is from uh, TL. There's nothing scary about you, chap. No matter how dangerous of a technician. You look more like a male anesthetician. Cocking your chest out with that definition. No, I don't mean Zack Sabre, supporter of labor. He's one of the best. I'm talking about that man with no heart. Brian Alvarez, the real chicken chest. I'm disgusted. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.